Okay, so in this video, we're going to be going over um, drawing more circle, and I listed off some of the steps that we need to do here in the procedure part. Um, and we have this stress element here. Um, I listed the known quantities that we know. Um, we know the sigma x is 300 megapascals, sigma y is negative 200 because this is going uh, in over here, and then that shear stress in the xy plane is 100 megapascals, positive. The reason it's positive here is because if we look at the right hand side, our shear stress arrow on our stress element, our shear stress arrow is going up. So to draw more circle, the first thing we need to do is I already drew these axes, but we need to establish what our axes are going to be and um, what our what they are going to be. So over here on the x-axis, we're going to have positive normal stress to the right, and we're going to have shear stress on the y-axis, but it's going to be positive down. So our shear stress, it's important to remember, is going to be positive down here. So this is what our, these are always kind of more doing stresses. This is always what our more circle um, axes are going to look like. The next thing is we want to find the average normal stress. And the reason we want to find the average normal stress is because wherever we have the average normal stress, um, that's, where gonna, that's where the center of our circle is going to be on our x-axis. So if we do this, um, we're just going to, it's literally just averaging these two. So it's going to be 300 plus negative 200 divided by 2 supposed to be a 2 here. So we're getting that our average normal stress in this case is going to be 50, positive 50 megapascals. So that means the center of our circle is going to be at um, sigma average comma 0. So it's going to be at 50 comma 0. So if we go down here, let's say each of these tick marks is 50 or something, right? Our center of the circle is going to be at positive 50 comma zero because it's going to be in the x-axis so we're not going to have any y uh, component to that. Our next thing we want to do is we want to plot, I call it like the reference point. Um, and we can use this reference point here to find the radius of the circle which is going to be our next step. So our reference point um, is always going to be whatever the we're going to plot wherever the normal stress in the x direction is, comma, with the shear stress from our stress element. Element. So if we look up here, we have normal stress of 300, and we have a shear stress of positive 100. So I'm going to plot, um, if we look here, uh, we're going to plot 300, comma, 100 on our diagram here. So if we remember... So 300 in the x, positive 300 in the x, that's going to be 100, 200, 300, and then 100 down. So somewhere around here. The reason it's 100 down is because, remember, we have shear stress, positive shear stress as going down. And if we connect these two points, this distance here is going to be our radius of the circle. And we can just spin this radius all the way around to draw our circle. So let's do that. Make a rough estimate. I need to make that a little bigger. And this isn't going to be a perfect circle here, but um, it doesn't have to be perfect. It's just kind of for us to get an idea of what our circle is going to look like and maybe just a little bit bigger. Yeah, that's perfect. So that's going to be our more circle. And so any point on this circle is going to be something where if we rotate this stress element by an angle theta, right, then if we rotate anything on more circle is going to be 2 times theta. So we have to move on more circle twice the amount that we're moving this element, and that's going to be a point of stress uh, for that. So that's going to be a valid point um, where if we transform that stress element, we get um, another kind of stress here. The next thing we want to do is we want to find what this actual radius is, what the value of the radius is. So we can do that by doing some trig here. So we know that this point that we plotted is 300 comma 100, right? And we know this center here is at 50 comma zero. So we can just do trig to figure out what this hypotenuse of this radius is gonna be. So this distance here is gonna be 300 minus 50. So it's gonna be 250 
And this distance, this vertical distance, is going to be 100 minus 0. So it's just going to be 100. So if we wanted to find the radius of the circle, we just do the sum of the squares of 250 squared plus 100 squared. And we get a radius value, if we plug that in, of 269 point, let's just say 26. So that's going to be the radius here, is that's going to be the value for the radius. Um, if we look at this, there's also kind of like a general equation we can write for the radius. So um, in this case, that's going to be sigma x, right, minus sigma average squared plus tau xy squared. So we can write... So we can write this equation for the radius if we wanted to. Um, but let's move on. Let's try to find our next step we want to do is we want to ca uh, calculate the principal stresses. So if we think about the principal stresses, those are the points where we're going to have our maximum or minimum normal stresses. So if we think about a plot on somewhere on the circle where those are going to be, they're going to be where we have our biggest normal stresses. So they're going to be at these points here. So if we think about it, if we just take the center of our circle here and then add or subtract the radius of this, then we'll get our principal stresses. So this is just going to be sigma average plus or minus the radius. So if we, in this case, it's going to be 50 plus or minus 269. 269.26. So we're going to get a sigma 1. Sigma 1 is always going to be the bigger, or the one that's more positive, and sigma 2 is going to be the one that's more negative. So in this case, we're going to get a sigma 1 of 319. Uh, we'll just round it 0.3 megapascals, and we'll get a sigma 2 of negative 219.3 megapascals. Those are going to be our principal stresses. And if we wanted to find the orientation of our principal stresses, right, um, if this, we could look at more circle and this angle to go from where we're starting to our principal stress line. Right, so that's going to be 2 times theta. So we can use some trig again to find that. So this angle here is 2 theta. So if we want to find 2 theta, right, we can do the tan inverse. And that's going to be opposite over adjacent. So we're going to get 2 theta is equal to 21.8, about that degrees, so then if we divide both sides by 2, we're going to get that theta is equal to 10.9 degrees, right? So if we wanted to find how much we need to rotate this element to get to our principal stresses, it would be 10.9 degrees, and we're rotating counterclockwise here, right? So counterclockwise is going to be positive, so this would be a positive angle. Um, so if they ask you to find, you know, how much we need to rotate the element to get our principal stresses, or this is really the principal angle here. Um, that's what you how you'd find it. Um, the other thing we want to find here is I'll do this in a different color. Is we want to find the shear stress, or the maximum in plane shear stress. So tau x y max in plane. And if you think about it, this is our shear stress axis here. So our maximum value is going to be if we go straight down from or straight up from the center of our circle and that's just going to be the value of the radius so our tau xy max is going to be equal to our radius which is going to be 269.26 megapascals it's going to be the magnitude of that and if we wanted to find the angle that we need to go so the angle theta s that we need to go to get to where we have our maximum um, shear stress, um, what I would do here is we know that theta p and theta s are always going to be 45 degrees apart. So since we know theta p here, our principal angle, we can just add or subtract 
uh, 45. So I'm going to subtract 45 degrees because I know that I'm going to be traveling clockwise to get to this point, And that will give me a negative angle, which, um, which makes sense in this case because we're going clockwise, so that's negative. So to find theta s, I would just do 10.9 degrees minus 45 degrees. That gets me a value of negative 34.1 degrees. So in this case, this is going to be 2 times theta s, so that would just be 2 times 34.1, which is 68.2. So 2 theta s would be 68.2 degrees. And that's how much we'd have to travel in more circle, which we look at that, that kind of makes sense. And if we want to check that, um, if we want to check that angle, we could always use the equation uh, that we know to calculate. Um, so that's just going to be from our uh, equations that we did in a previous video. That's going to be tan times 2 theta s is equal to negative sigma x minus sigma y divided by 2 over tau xy. So if we do that, we get that 2 theta s is equal to 68.2 degrees. So then that theta s would be 34.1 degrees. And since we're going uh, clockwise, that would be negative there. So um, that's kind of how we do more circle. Uh, general things you just need to know is if you know how to do the center and find the radius, the rest of it is pretty easy. Um, but yeah, hopefully these steps help a little bit. And um, yeah, and more circle is also useful for strain transformation. Um, and it's basically the same step, but for strain transformation, obviously, um, for doing strain transformation, this would turn it into normal strain. And then instead of shear stress, we're going to have shear strain, which is gamma, but it's going to be gamma divided by two. But other than that, it's pretty much the same steps for strain transformation, and we'll do that in another video.